hey welcome back in this video i'm gonna show you how to work with maps and by maps in action i mean something you can zoom in zoom out drag and drop somewhere where you can like let's say toggle filters and make it so that the users wouldn't really tell a difference if it's real or it's just a prototype and right off the bat here you can see i have a mock-up which i took from sketch app resources done by evgeny lobanov i'm probably butchering the name but it's one of the designers who's basically produced some ui kits and here we have google maps ui kit I'm gonna take this, what he's done, and I'm gonna try to port it into Axure and make some tweaks. <laughs> Boom, and so I set up all our items in here. But now the issue is, that you can't never predict how wide, let's say, the agent or the browser window or how, how you're gonna demo it, you never know. So how can we make it flexible so it adapts to all, all corners? If you remember from my previous videos, we can always assure that our elements, like let's say the floating bits, are always positioned in a corner by pinning them. And let me just go ahead and do so. So I'm gonna create dynamic panels for each of them. So let's say this is our search. Um, and I'm gonna create dynamic panel for our filters. And lastly, I'm gonna create a dynamic panel for both of our controls. So maybe let's call it zoom or something like that. Controls. And now one by one, I'm just gonna go to style and select pin to browser. And we want to pin this one to left top. And as you can see, the margin is already set from our previous selection easy as that that's great and we're gonna do the same for the filters you see our controls have been placed in the corners everything is great but our map is way too small so what we should do here is really just either increase the size of it manually and adapt it to to the bits or do something else about it so what i usually like to do is is just really increase the size of the thing because the map has to be pretty big to, for us to work. I'm gonna show you exactly how to place a different zoom of a map and do it manually and kind of like implement it pretty well. You can also embed some maps if you want to refer to our embed functionality but again you have to assure that the maps are well placed. But let's say if we do something like this and now preview you're gonna see that our map now covers everything and we can kind of like scroll up and down easily like so and it's kind of like a google-ish ui but it doesn't do any tricks at the very least we should try to make a simple zoom or, or zoom out that's the easiest options which i like to see in my prototypes at least and what users usually play with so i'm gonna go ahead and just create a dynamic panel for this block we created like so um i think Ours is like round one, four, something like this. And we can also reduce it to, let's say, maybe 600. It's never more than that on the user, but let's, let's do like this. And now if I go inside in our dynamic panel, also don't forget to name it, of course, in, in interactions, let's give it a map container, let's say, name. And then in our bid here the trick is to create another dynamic panel inside dynamic panel and let's call this one actual map and now we can basically say let me just look for it a new interaction on mouse drag or on drag let's say we're gonna say move what's inside this panel together with a drag so then we can basically drag the map up and down instead of scrolling up and down. It's gonna be easy as that. So let me find our map, actual map. With drag, we can also restrict if we want to, add boundaries if you want to. Uh, for, for this thing, I don't want to add any boundaries just yet. And just click OK. Now, as long as the map which is placed inside is bigger than the one we're presenting as a container, 
you're gonna have an effect like this. So you're already allowing users to kind of browse. As you can see, since map is not infinite, there is white space. So you might want to add the boundaries. And how you do that is on that dragging option. Just click on it and click more options, click boundary, and then you can add the boundaries. So I would add at least two boundaries here. So I would say top is less than zero, and then I'm gonna add another one. So let's say left, which is our primary two suspect is let's say less than zero two. So because it starts at zero and zero, and you're gonna see the effect. So I, I'm not able to drag it to the right, let's say now, but from the right to the left, I'm able to do whatever I want, just like so. And you can add then another two boundaries for the right side as well as the bottom side. And next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the zoom effect. So if you click on the container and we have that map option, which is another, we can create the state. So let's say this is our first state. So let's say this is our X large, and then we're gonna create a state for, let's say large, and then medium, and then let's say small and by small i mean it's gonna be zoomed in the most so in x large i'm gonna go ahead and just delete this so if you go to snazzy maps let's say you can create quite a few different styles to maps so we can just check a couple of options whatever looks best go well, maybe something like that something minimal quite like it you can download the image here so if we set it to 1000 by 1000, we can download this picture and let's center it maybe on something like San Francisco. It's gonna be our X large. As you can see, it also gives us a center. So maybe we center it like this. Uh, we can download it as 2X, that's great. So let me just quickly download it. So that's our X large. And now I'm gonna show you a tip how to do a, like a zoomed in versions. So you're just gonna click, let's say once, I would click maybe even twice, but let's do it once so it's clear and then download another time. So it's, we're gonna keep on zooming in and then adding in every slideshow of a dynamic panel. Let's download it. And then I'm gonna zoom in again, like so, and download again. As you can see, we get more detail into this. Again, if your map is different choice, visually different, you're gonna see more detail. And then I think we need another couple. So we can download this. And I think we have maybe four styles. That should be enough for us to go ahead and create a zooming functionality. Boom. So I have these bits and pieces. As you can see, we have the first one and then number to the second one and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use it right away. So this is our X large, which is like the very first one. Um, let's do it something like this. Let's do it maybe 1,500 by 1,500. So we don't run out of space, but it's still pretty good, like so. So that's X large, then let's go to large and drag another map from our folder, like so. Again, I'm gonna resize it a little bit. I was too overconfident of the sizing here. And do it maybe like so. And then go for a medium one and exactly the same way. Close, and now we have our map with all the different bits inside. So how we're gonna do the zoom in feature, we're just gonna go ahead and click on our receiver, on our selector, and you can either make a button but I'm just gonna really quickly use a hotspot. It's really up to you how you wanna do it. And in a hotspot, I'm gonna go new interaction and then just simply set panel state. As per usual, dynamic panels are for the win and they're really great in this case. And click, set panel state, map, and you see we have X large and so forth. But in this case, we can do it a little bit differently. So we can say, let's say next, or we can say medium, or you know, it's it's up to you what you wanna do. You can even add variable and, and listen to it exactly what was previous state, and then let's say restrict it. I'm just gonna say, let's say next. Now wrapping from the last, it's gonna just shuffle it in 
that's totally fine. I think for this prototype example, it should be okay. So I'm gonna just take it down. And then with the next one, I'm gonna select previous instead of next. Like so. Because we basically are in descending order presenting those maps. And let's preview it. Let's see what happens. As always, experiments need to be previewed. So if we click plus, as you can see, it zooms out. So we reverse the order, really. We should have reversed the order, but as you can see, there is some zoom in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and just replace the two bits. I thought I was doing it in descending order, but that's totally fine. Let's zoom in, boom, boom, boom. And then we can also, you know, as long as you add boundaries or bigger map, you can allow it to be draggable and so forth, or just zoom out and then draggable as well, zoom out more, draggable in as well. So there is a lot of different options of how to do so, but that gives you an idea of how to create like a basic zoom effect and basic draggable effect. Next, we have filters. And with filters, it's a bit more tricky because now we have to make an executive decision. If we make the zooming functionalities, whatever you toggle in the filters has to be unique to that specific field and that specific slide in the dynamic panel and that layer. And by that, I mean, let me just show you really quick. So maybe we make it on medium. So that's going to make a bit more sense, like right here. Like so, let's say. I'm just gonna go ahead and create dynamic panel out of those filters and name it, let's say, houses. By default, we can toggle them off, but we need to remember that now, let's say, if we want them to be present in large, we have to consider how it's gonna be affected because they have to scale or be positioned more specifically. So I'm gonna leave that to you, but I'm just gonna show you how to make the toggle. Um, it's quite simple and you probably already know how, but basically we have this filters panel, right? And we just need to make the expandable option. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's say this is expanded and this is our default. And in the expanded set, I'm just gonna increase the size of it, let's say to that maybe reverse the icon itself. Let's zoom in a little bit and transform shape vertically like so. Really quickly, just gonna make a, maybe a checkbox saying houses. And if let's say interactions, if on selected show, automatically selecting from what actually is showing us and we can say houses that to be shown automatically and we can even animate it them in or something like that. So I'm just gonna do a fade and in, let's say 400, so half a second or so. So every time we would select this to show the houses, every time on unselected, we need to hide it. So again, gonna select our houses layer, which is hidden right now, and just immediately hide it, let's say. Simple as that. All we need to do now is just finish our toggle so if you can find the hotspot whoops the hotspot like so kapow and just add an interaction to it on click and just saying set panel state filters to default that's great and i'm gonna copy the same thing but just to a default state paste it and instead of default we're going to change it to expand it and maybe also slide down because it's kind of like a tiny drop down we don't need to animate out and let's preview it i think that should work as long as we are on a medium i don't remember how to get to a medium plane i think if i zoom in two times maybe and then filters i select houses boom the houses are selected and that's it. 
And now if we resize this, as you can see, we can resize everything else with all the houses and you can add as many filters or as many options, but it gives you a good idea of what's achievable if actually based on, let's say, you know, mapping experiences and stuff like that and allowing users let's say, to browse different things to toggle different things and you can make it as complex as possible because once you introduce variables boy you can just go crazy and just customize it to bits so i'll leave it with you um if you like this video as usual subscribe to this channel leave a comment down below and let me know what you want me to cover because we already have maybe 36 or 7 is this session over six hours of material. I know a few other bits I want to cover, but if you have anything specific, let me know so I can continue publishing this content and you can continue learning with us and also maybe sharing the videos with your friends or colleagues or peer designers. Feel free to do so, I'll really appreciate it and it keeps me motivated to produce more. So as usual, I'll see you next time and stay tuned for more material.